What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at exactly what you can do personally so that you can instantly start increasing the amount of reps during the two minute push up test. Now there are two techniques. I'm gonna go over exactly how you can apply them and start using them into your own PT tests. Now when I used and applied them during my test, I instantly saw a, around a 15 to 20 rep increase when it came to actually testing. And then I'm gonna go over exactly what you can do what kind of training exercises you should be looking for and doing in order to gradually increase the amount of reps you can do during the two minute push-up test. And for those of you guys who do not know me, my name is Joshua Thompson. I'm a former United States Army Ranger. I was getting around 90 to 100 push-ups every single test that I would take. This guide was, is ultimately for those of you who not only want to meet the standard, you want to absolutely crush and exceed the standard. This is the video for you. So going over the things you can instantly apply to right now, it all basically boils down to your form and how you perform the exercise so what you can do right now immediately has to do with your form you know what is your hand position look like if you internally rotate your hands and make a form and diamond when you form this diamond it actually makes the push-up exercise a little bit easier and you can knock out a few more reps because it's a more natural position for your body. Now, to keep in mind, when you're performing the push-up, make sure you're doing it with proper technique. That means your head is up, your back is straight, your chest hits the ground. When it comes to actual testing, there's gonna be some instructors that are very specific with the form they're looking for. Particularly when it comes to going down, they want you going down all the way, and what all the way means is they want you to break the 90 degree plane. Now, some people are performing their push-up where they have their elbows out like this. Now their chest may be hitting the ground, but they're not breaking the 90 degree plane. Because of that, they get docked for not going all the way down. Another thing that can dock someone is if they're not going all the way up. So make a point to where you are going to lock that elbow out and push Basically twist your forearm out so that it ensures to the greater that you performed an actual rep. A lot stricter when it comes to schools like Ranger School in particular. One thing that I, I personally did to caveat and get around this was I was always bouncing my chest off the ground and I was able to ultimately get my 49 pretty fairly easy. This is something that a lot of people get docked for and I've, I've personally seen people who very well exceed the standard in every type of way but they still don't pass the push-up test when it comes to ranger school because of their strict grader and this is one way that you can use in order to avoid that. And so the next tip I have that you can instantly use to dramatically improve instantly is the pacing. Pacing is extremely important when it comes to push-ups. And the reason for this is because it's an endurance test at heart. If you think about it in terms of the five mile run or two mile run or whatever you're doing at the time, you're not going to start out sprinting or maybe you are, but you're gonna burn out. If you start out sprinting at the beginning of a race, you're always going to burn out at the back end. And because you're burning out you're not saving the energy you need for later in the test it's the same thing when it comes to push-up tests this is why you need to pace yourself so you can ensure that you have enough gas in the tank when it comes to later on towards the end of that two minute one thing that i personally did when it comes to pacing i would always bust out like 40 to 50 reps straight out but i would do it in a moderate way so like the first 35 40 seconds of the test was just me busting out 40, 50 reps. And then once I get to around, I wanna say nine, 80 to 90% of pretty much being tired out, I particularly would arch my back in the rest position. You're about 35 to 50 seconds into the test. And that's when I make the transition to five reps. Once you hit that limit, that's when you start doing sets of five. Once I hit that limit, pause, and I bust out five, one, two, three, four, five. Then I rest again, one, two, three, four, five, rest. And that's the cadence I would go during every PT test. When I immediately applied this on the next PT test, when I found out about this technique, I dramatically increased my PT score, dramatically. I was getting around upper 70s, 
lower 80s and that's when I made the ultimate jump to the 90s and 100 club. This tip alone will definitely dramatically increase your PT score test. And so like if you're taking a push-up test, this is something you can apply right now so that you can instantly improve. Take that as what you will. So when it comes to actual preparation, that is with like a regular push-up test. But when it comes to the T push-up test, it's a lot different. You would keep the same pacing principles, but it's it's executed differently when it comes to the T push-up. This is a really selection tip because I don't know if they have T push-ups implemented into the, the standards at the time you're going, but it does happen. The T push-up does get implemented into the schools and selections. The pacing is a lot different. The pacing is more like you're not going as fast as possible when it comes to the T push-up. It's really important to pace yourself in during this test. The best advice I have for this, I was able to get 60 to 70 reps when it comes to the T push-up. And ultimately it comes down to pacing yourself and learning the pace. So I guess the best tip I have for this is to experiment, know what pace works best for you. And then once you find that, implement it into your actual test. It's important, just like the regular two minute push-up test, it's an endurance test, so make sure you are pacing yourself. One thing that most people are likely overlook is the preparation going into the PT test. And this is extremely important because you wanna make sure your body is primed and ready to go when it comes to these tests. And that looks like reducing a lot of the intensity uh, before this test. So don't be afraid to take a day or two off for these tests. One a rule of thumb that I always went by was I would always do active recovery or, or active rest two days before and then just take the day before completely off and my body was always primed and ready to go. So how can you improve? It really just depends on your circumstances, but the overall goal is muscular endurance for the chest. And so you need to be making sure that you're training accordingly. So if you're lifting heavy sets, bench press, that's not really gonna help you out overall when it comes to muscular endurance. It's definitely gonna help you out in the strength department. We ultimately want to have muscular endurance when it comes to these tests. And so what you need to do is you need to increase the amount of, not only increase the amount of volume that you're doing, and so that means focusing on high rep ranges, 20 to 30 reps bench press, if you're going to lift. But if you wanna get the most bang for your buck, what I personally did was I would combine calisthenics with lifting. And the reason for this is you're not only going to be able to basically max the capacity you have for muscular endurance, but you also gain a lot of strength in the process too. However, let's say you don't have access to a gym. Uh, for me, when I was going through AIT, I didn't have access to a gym because COVID ultimately would shut down all the gyms and I would have to resort to going out on the track and doing a bunch of calisthenics. The principle that I went by back in that day was time under tension. That was what I lived by. I would ultimately live by the three one ratio, three seconds on the negative and one second on the positive. A good way you already know doing um, calisthenics, push up drills, those are really great on their own. They can definitely help you improve. But the best way that I found personally was uh, mixing both calisthenics and weight training at the same time. And this can be very beneficial for your muscular endurance. So let's say for example, you're doing the bench press. I would personally do 15 to 20 reps bench press, and then I would superset it on top of diamond push-ups for 20. And that would ultimately be like 40 reps promoting the most amount of muscular endurance that my body could possibly handle. And as a result of that training, I would get around 90 to 100 reps every single time I'd take a PT test. And then the best way to track your progress and all of this is at the end of the week, take a two minute push up drill test, track your progress, and then continue to grind and do it again the next week. And you will see a lot of growth. And then the last thing I have for you guys is I will have a video link in the description, a workout I did during the COVID pandemic when I didn't have access to the gym. It's a pretty um, extensive push-up workout going pretty much over every single variation. So you hit all, you can target all areas of your chest and it extremely promotes heavy muscular endurance. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you check it out. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit that like button as it does help out the channel and uh, consider subscribing for more helpful tips like this in the future. And with that said, I will see you guys in the next one.